Hello everybody, it's your boy Natal. So I am going to make my first video in Shadowlands. It's going to be an outlaw guide that you can probably already see on the screen. I'm wearing two pretty big swords and uh, that's just what you do with outlaw man. So I'm going to get into why I play outlaw and how you can maximize your performance if you also decide to play outlaw. So um, yeah, let's get into the video guys. So first off, I'm going to go over why I picked Outlaw. It's uh, pretty nice so far, I must say. I always used to be a big opponent to Outlaw. I always used to uh, used to tell people I, I didn't like the spec. And if you, if you watch my earlier content, I, I always used to dislike it quite a lot. Um, my biggest problem was the re-rolling of the, the dice, right? It was like the, this, this re-rolling, just like sometimes you do literally zero damage and sometimes you do insane damage. And I'm going to show you why that's not really the case anymore. Uh, obviously, the spell still exists. You can see it here on my bar, roll the bones. But it's been changed. It now has a 45 second cooldown and it costs a little bit of energy and it gives you a 30 second combat enhancement and it can obviously still give you between one and six rolls so it's still rng but you don't just spam it anymore and there's some actual logic to it and it actually makes sense and it's it's way more consistent not only because it's a cooldown but also because of another thing a conduit that i will of course go over in the conduit sec section of this video but it's this one. It's called County Odds. Ambush and Dispatch. Dispatch is your, your main finisher. It's like Eviscerate. Uh, have an 18% chance to grant you a Roll the Bones combat enhancement buff you do not already have for 5 seconds. 18% is pretty high. And when you get higher item level of this, it's going to go up even more. This means that a lot of the time you're going to have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 maybe uh, combat enhancements. Just really small, short ones. Which, which really help even out. Like if you get a one roll, but then you get two procs of that, you can still have a three roll for a little bit of time anyway. So it's actually, it actually makes it quite nice to play it. And um, of course the AOE of Outlaw is just, it's just exceptional. Uh, you will see in the AOE situation, in the AOE uh, section of this, this video, but the single target is actually comparable to sub. I played sub for the first, uh, for the first two three days of shadowlands but sub was just kind of underwhelming in dungeons uh, i felt like the black powder finisher wasn't really strong enough i felt and it was like you were basically sat there just just spamming one two one two one two so that was like shuriken storm black powder shuriken storm black powder shuriken storm black powder and it was just spamming like that it wasn't very interactive and very fun uh and this is where i think outlaw really pulls ahead Outlaw does very, very well in dungeons, and it also does surprisingly well single target. I would say sub and outlaw currently, at the current gear level, and, and from what I've seen and the testing I've done of both the specs, I would say the damage is the same on single target. Obviously, we don't have any Warcraft logs to look at from the fights of the new raid or anything like that, but I would say outlaw is comparable to sub for single target, and outlaw is way better for multi-target. And since I'm going to be focusing on Mythic Plus this expansion, I just felt that that um, it's just the best choice for me personally. And I enjoy the playstyle a lot more. And I think you might as well. So we're going to go into this video now and I'll show you more about Outlaw, guys. So when it comes to talents as an Outlaw Rogue, uh, these are the talents I pick for Mythic Plus and uh, Cleave scenarios, right? Um, so... The first three I pick quick draw. I use quick draw for both single target and mythic plus, so I never take this off. This uh, it makes it so pistol shots uh, half cost uh, procs that you get from sinister strike now generate one additional combo point and the 50% additional damage. So you just get more combo points, which is really nice. Uh, for the second tier, I pick acrobatic strikes, increase the range on all your melee attacks by three yards. This doesn't sound very insane. But it actually is. Like, I'm gonna show you how far I can melee something. Like, it might even be farther than that. Like, my swords are very long, but they're not that long, right? So, you can see how, how far away I can actually melee this mob. And that helps a lot, because if there's some AoE going on here... Like, I'm a melee, right? And I don't want to stand in a bunch of stuff. So that's why, like, having this increased range of the melee is very nice. 
for when you're hitting things you want to stay out of things and whatever so so it's really nice to have some extra range and this also helps it so when you when you do like for example blade flurry it hits more targets because of your increased range so it's just that this is really the only way to go even in raids i mean there might be some specific encounters where you want to pick the other two but i i, I just pick this currently i just pick this for everything the third tier is one of the tiers that i change depending on what i'm doing uh, for single target, I want to play deeper stratagem. This just does the same thing as for sub. It gives you six combo points instead of five as your maximum. And your finishing moves deals 5% increased damage. So for single target or for, or for something when I don't fight a lot of enemies, like even for cleave fights, I would probably pick deeper stratagem. Um, but for mythic plus, I picked mark for death. And that marks the target instantly generating five combo points. Cooldown is reset if the target dies within one minute. So when I'm doing mythic plus, uh, this is really nice or when I'm out in the world grinding or something it's, it's a really nice talent to have and I use this all the time when I'm out in the world or in dungeons Because you use it on a mob you get full combo points and you can actually use it in stealth as well So I use it like that I get full combo points and then if I'm in stealth I can put up slice and dice and then roll roll the bones even before I start the fight so that's why I really like it. And then if you kill that, you can put it on another thing and you just keep putting it on small HP targets in the pack. And then you just keep cleaving with your full uh, full five combo point dispatches and stuff like that. So so it's it's really nice. Uh, for the fourth tier, I pick Sheet Death. Basically, uh, because sometimes when I play, I potato and I stand in something. And then I don't want to die. I don't want to look stupid. I want... I, I, sometimes I stand in the thing, but I don't want to get punished for it, really, you know? Like, I want to be like, okay, ow, that kind of hurt, and then take a step back, you know? I don't want to die. So, that's why I pick Sheet Death. Uh, you could play, like, all of these different ones, obviously, if you're not planning on dying. Uh, if you're not planning... If you, if you play perfectly and never stand in anything, you probably don't need Sheet Death, I guess. But uh, the Iron Stomach increases your, your healing from Crimson Vial and Healing Potions, which is not bad. But I, I just I, I just like sheet death, man. It, it, it helps me survive. It helps me not die. It doesn't help me survive. It helps me not die. Because uh, Iron Stomach would help me survive, right? Because I can heal more. But I just play with sheet death all the time because I don't want to die. Uh, elusiveness. If you have a boss or something that does very heavy single target damage to you, then this is definitely something you want to use. But something you want to think about with Faint is that it, it already reduces 40% of damage taken from area of effect attacks which is most of the damage you're going to be taking. But if a boss has like a powerful bolt that uh, they shoot at you, for example, I remember uh, Xavius in the uh, Legion dungeon, uh, Dark Moon Thicket, Dark Heart Thicket maybe it was called, uh, he did like a really powerful single target bolt that you need elusiveness for. So for like Mythic Plus Heavy Tyrannical or something like that, you might want to play elusiveness. But right now I just play Sheet Death for everything. Uh, for the fifth tier, there's uh, all these different ones that you can play. Uh, I pick Prey on the Weak because it reduces, uh, it increases damage by 10% when I stun things uh, for 6 seconds. So uh, I can Sheep Shot, I can Kidney Shot something and they get 10% more damage. So I like to do that in, in dungeons if I have the option to. Um, in uh, like I like to stun things in dungeons obviously to help out my team and it also increases the damage they take. It says from all sources, so it might even be the, the damage they take from my party's attacks. I haven't really tested or looked into that, but they just take more damage when they're stunned. It, it's nice, right? Um, the others are not too bad. I mean, I think this one improves your blind and this one makes your, your CC cost no energy. This one could be nice as well because you don't want to, like someone is like casting something and you, you can't cast gouge, for example, because you don't have the energy, for example. So this might be nice too, but I play Prey on the Weak because uh, I like when things increase my damage. For the fifth tier, it's Loaded Dice, Alacrity, and Dreadblades. I currently only play Alacrity for everything. It gives you haste uh, when you... It gives you a stackable haste buff when you do your finishing moves. It's just passive haste, basically. It, it comes up to 10% haste pretty fast. You just need to do, uh, do a couple of finishing moves, and uh, there you go. Because it's actually 20% chance per combo point. So it's like 100% chance per full combo point finishing move. So... Uh, you end up having 10% free haste all the time, basically, which is very, very nice. The last tier is another one that I changed for single target or AoE. For AoE, I use Killing Spree. For single target, uh, wait. No, for AoE, I use Blade Rush. And for single target, I use Killing Spree. 
So Blade Rush is just you charge your target with your blades out, dealing uh, X amount of damage to the target and X amount to all other nearby enemies. With Blade Flurries active, damage to non-primary targets is increased by 100%. So you want to use Blade Flurry and then you want to use Blade Rush. That's kind of how you do it. So, But you can also use the Blade Rush in a different way. So, so what you want to do is you want to use your, first your Blade Flurry and then you want to use your Blade Rush. But... You can also use your blade, uh, blade rush as, like, let's say the boss is moving away from you, right? You want, you want to catch the boss, then you can use your blade, uh, blade rush, and you actually charge the enemy like that, which is very underrated. Like, it's very nice to use um, sometimes for, like, when the boss is running away from you. For example, you're trying to stick on the boss. Uh, it, it's, it's really nice to do that. Um, for example, if a boss knocks you up in the air and you press that right as he knocks you up, then you just go like a little bit up in the air and then you fly down to him again. So it's it's a very nice ability. Um, Killing Spree works the same way as that, but it, it just sticks you on the target and does a bunch of damage. Uh, I use Killing Spree. I can't change it now because I'm on cooldown, but I use Killing Spree on single target. Um, yeah, I'll tell you when in your rotation you're going to use it, but I use it for single target because it does more damage um, on single target. And it's... It, it's a nice ability. So that's the talent choices that I use. So a quick recap. I don't change anything in this tree you can see. So I use quick draw, acrobatic strikes for everything. Then I swap between deeper stratagem and mark for death. I use mark for death for dungeons or for raids also. If there's like a lot of small mobs that die fast, like small ads, then I would use mark for death. Otherwise, I would use deeper stratagem all the way on single target and on cleave fights where there's not a lot of small ads. On uh, the fourth tier, I play sheet death. On the fifth tier, I play prey on the weak. On the fifth tier, sixth tier, sorry, I play alacrity. And on the sixth tier, I swap between blade rush and killing spree. Blade rush is for AOE for dungeon situations. Killing spree is for single target situations. And PvP talents, you can just pick whatever. I, I don't really PvP at all. So, yeah, just pick whatever you want for those, huh? All right, now I'm going to talk about soul binds and conduits. There's not really a lot to talk about here, even though this all might seem very confusing. It's basically, you get a hero. You own, We have only unlocked one hero right now. I, I call them heroes, but I don't really know. But it's these, these guys on the side. I think they're called soul binds, actually. But, but yeah, you, you, you pick one of these. And then you get a bunch of little talents here. It's almost like a talent tree that you build downward. Uh, and you can really pick whatever you want. For Night Fae, the best way is to go down to Nia's Tools Burst, which is the best one, uh, according to The Sims. And other than that, you can just pick whatever you want and whatever you have. But the potency conduit is the damage conduit. That's the thing that really matters. And this thing drops uh, all over the world. But I would definitely recommend farming these. this even on normal. It drops in Theater of Pain from Gore Chop. And I have the heroic version. And even if you get it on normal at 158 eye level, it still gives you a 16.5% chance. So it's not much of a difference compared to mine, which is 18% chance. So it's only 1.5% chance difference. So... I would definitely farm it on normal if you don't have it, because the normal one is actually better than any you will find on Mythic, according to these simulations from Blood Mallet. So if you go to the Night Fae Covenant uh, here, we're on the Night Fae Covenant, here you can see the, the simulations of all the different ones. First Strike is, is one you get from your Soulbind, same as the Nia Souls Burst that I already showed you. The First Strike is not available yet, and neither is this one. I mean, we're still very early in the expansion. So I think the only thing you really need to focus on right now is the conduit, which is the little thing you put into your tree yourself. It's not something that you pick or, or like endurance, uh, survivability or whatever. It's like the actual only thing that you pick that does damage. And that's count the odds. It's right here. It's 187 DPS uh, value at uh, conduit rank 7, according to Blood Mallet. And the only closest one that you can actually drop and that you can put in your gear is called Sleight of Hand at 107 so it's almost twice as good like count the odds is almost twice as good as sleight of hand and with only a 1.5 difference from heroic to normal for example even having the normal count the odds would be better than the mythic sleight of hand so i definitely recommend getting count the odds uh on any level you can get it but it's such a good trait it's even better than grove invigoration which is the first 
uh, talent in your soul bind uh, right here. So you can see this one, Grove Invigoration, is like a soul bind talent. It's like the whole like the whole soul bind is like based around this ability. And count the odds is actually stronger than this ability on its own. So like count the odds is, is a huge conduit. So you definitely need to go out and farm this if you don't have it already. It's gonna make your life so much easier and it's gonna be so much fun, more fun to play outlaw when you have this conduit right here. Other than that, just pick whatever soul bind you have. You only have one soul bind, so you can't really pick and just work your way down. And if you pick Night Fae, your strongest one is Nia's Tools Burst. That's the one you want to work your way down to. When it comes to legendaries, it's just like the conduit, okay? There's only one choice, really. Like, realistically, there's only one choice. The others are pretty good, but I would say this is by far your best one. And once I, like, start using it, I'm never gonna take it off. I'm never gonna switch it. It's just so good. It's called Celerity. It uh, makes it so your Adrenaline Rush increases your damage by 8% and you have a chance while Slice and Dice is active to gain the Adrenaline Rush effect for 3 seconds. You always have Slice and Dice up, which means getting Adrenaline Rush every so often will really help with your energy regen and really make your play so much more fluid and so much nicer. And it's also going to give you the 8% damage for those 3 seconds every so often and during your Adrenaline Rush. So I really think this Legendary is just amazing. It drops from the second boss in Spires of Ascension, even on normal difficulty, but on Mythic as well, of course. So I would just get to farming this and make sure you have it by the time we can craft our legendaries. We don't know when that's going to be, but there, it might be even on Wednesday. Otherwise, it's going to be next Wednesday when the raids, the normal raids come out. But I would definitely get into farming Memory of Celerity for the legendary. And the way it works is you need this memory you need two uh, items from the auction house to, to choose which stats you want on your on your legendary they're called missives so i've got the missive of haste and missive of versatility because that's my best stats but i will go over stats in in, in the later part of the video but you want these two missives for, for whatever stats you want and then you want the memory and you want a leather item from the auction house and as you can see on this one when you go into powers it's you can rune carve it on shoulders and finger and i've decided i'm going to rune carve it on shoulders because shoulders will give me a big agility boost i'm going to try to get this at pretty high item level and even if you get it at the lowest item level which is 190 it's still pretty high compared to what we have right now so the agility boost will be very nice and agility is my best stat by by quite a big margin as you can see here Agility is 3.14 on the dungeon, uh, in, in dungeons. And so it's one agility is worth three versatility, for example. So agility is just huge. So that's why I'm going to put it on my shoulders. You can also put it on the ring, considering there's a good drop from the second to last boss in Castle Nathria. It's called Wicked Flanker's Gorget, which has, has crit and versatility, which are great stats. So you could go either way with that, but I've decided to go shoulders for the agility increase and uh, I've decided to go with celerity and I'm going to use it for dungeons and I'm going to use it for uh, single target raiding. I'm, I'm basically going to use it for everything and never take it off. If you're interested in simulations, I'll show you the simulations of the legendaries right now. Uh, these are the simulations. Celerity is at the top with 516 and then Greenskin's Wickers is the closest one at 360. So it's quite a big jump from Greenskin to Celerity. So I'm just going to go with Celerity. It's such an insane thing and it's just going to make, I think it's going to make playing Outlaw even more fun because it's going to be even more fluid. Like you're not going to have any energy downtimes or anything like that. Like you're just going to keep on pumping all the time. So I'm definitely going to pick Celerity for my Legendary. I'm going to put it on my shoulders and uh, that's all there's to it. So when it comes to stats, um, I mean, I highly advise you to sim your own character. But what I can tell you based on my simulations on my character is that agility is huge. Agility is huge. This is single target and this is uh, dungeon slice from the raid bots. So for single target, agility is king still. And then after agility, we have haste at the highest point and then versatility, crit and mastery. For the dungeon slice, which is it's a simulated dungeon, it is in beta, as you can see up here, so we didn't, we're not sure how accurate it is, but uh, this is available also if you want to see it. So 
Uh, here, agility is king as well, and it's three times as good as any of the other stats, um, especially mastery, which is really, really bad. So, uh, crit is the highest, and then versatility is basically the same. I mean, 1.01 .01 compared to 1, and then below that is haste and mastery. So, that's why I've decided to pick versatility haste on my legendary, because haste is pretty good for AoE, and versatility is tied bis for AoE on secondary stats. And for single target, haste is the best and versatility is the second. So basically, based on my simulations, you want to go for haste and versatility. You want to get as much agility as you can, which means prioritizing high item level gear with agility on it. And then you want to get haste and versatility after that on as many pieces as you can. Uh, this is based on my simulations. So I would suggest that you make your own simulations i have a video on my channel from like two years ago it's it's still valid like you still do the same thing as i did back then so you can go check that out if you want to uh but that's that's my simulations um as you can see i have a lot of mastery which is my worst stat for dungeons so my gear is actually pretty bad i mean considering i have a high item level but i have a lot of mastery gear which is not great it's 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 really not good <laughs> So I'm working on obviously replacing as much of that as I can. For example, this, this neck for dungeons, a heroic neck with better stats would probably be better. So I'm going to probably work on replacing that, especially if we don't manage to, uh, to get a good mythic neck, neck, uh, mythic neck next week. Then I'm going to try to replace this with a heroic neck with better stats. So that's basically what I have on stats. Uh, go for agility and then go haste versatility that's what i need to do but your simulations might look different so i would suggest that you sim yourself sim your own character all right and when you want to get into enchanting your character i wouldn't suggest that you enchant any gear below mythic eye level which is 184 like mythic dungeon eye level if you want to start enchanting your gear anyway like i have then of course you can but i would suggest waiting with enchanting your gear um, but if you're like me you want to min max go ahead i mean i'm not gonna stop you so there's some new cloak enchants out that give you 20 stamina and then some additional stuff i think you can get 30 stamina as well yes you can so you can get 30 stamina or 20 stamina and any amount of uh any secondary stat so i've picked 20 stamina and 30 avoidance you might as well go for 30 stamina if you want to, to have a bigger health pool to survive hits better and stuff like that. But I like the avoidance, take a little bit less AOE damage and stuff like that. The, this puts me at 4% avoidance, which is not bad, actually, uh, along with some other avoidance gear, of course. But I picked the 20 stamina, 30 avoidance on my cloak. For the chest piece, there's a new enchant that gives you 30 all stats it gives you for rogue it gives you 30 stamina and 30 agility that's the two stats that we care about so we get all of our stats from this 30 stats uh it's the best one i put it on a, a heroic item level gear but uh i would suggest uh waiting until mythic eye level if it's expensive on your server there's also a 20 plus stat one that you might want to use on heroic gear instead but yeah you want to put this stat one on your on your gear 30 stats is huge. I mean, it's almost as much agility as my piece gives itself. My piece gives 49, I get 30 extra from agility. And as you saw on the stats, agility is a crazy stat. So that's definitely something you want to look into. For uh, wrists and gloves, there are some optional, like, uh, uh, I don't even know, cooldown of your hearthstone things or something. I haven't looked into that. I'm, I'm only interested in pumping DPS, dude. I'm only interested in doing big numbers. For the boots, you can get 20 agility and a 15 agility. It's called Enchant Boots Eternal Agility. I have the cheaper version, the 10 agility, because I have a really bad pair of heroic boots. I'm not going to throw a crazy enchant on those, these boots that have a, a lot of mastery and they're, they're not even mythic eye level. So you can get 15 agility if you want, but I got 10 because I wanted to save a bit of gold. Uh, for your rings, you can pick any enchant that you want. I picked haste because haste is, is my best stat single target right now. If I was only caring about dungeons, I would probably go versatility, but we'll see what I do in the future. But yeah, you can put 16 of any secondary stat. You should put whatever stat is the best for you and you should just put that on your rings. 
The most interesting change to enchants is the weapons, in my opinion. Uh, I, have a I have a weapon enchant called Lightless Force. It costs about 10k gold on my server, so I wouldn't put it on any type of weapon. I would only get it on a mythic eye level weapon, at least, right? Um, so I got two BOE weapons uh, that uh, I bought for pretty cheap, and I put Lightless Force on both of these. That's what you want to do for dungeons. It seems a little bit better than any other option. And what Lightless Force does is that when, when you hit something like this, you will see I get a I get a proc there, a shadow wave that goes through the mobs. So when you have a lot of mobs, you can imagine it, it's, it's really nice. It also adds the, the, the um, uh, positioning element to your DPS rotation, right? You want to make sure that that wave hits as many mobs as possible. So if I'm DPSing these three, I want to stand so it hits all of them, you know? So that's pretty nice, and it pops pretty often, as you can see. Um, so that's why I really like that one. Uh, I have it on both my weapons. It seems a little bit better. You can also put Celestial Guidance, which increases your primary stat by 5% when attacking. And since agility is really good, primary stat is really good. So when I start raiding, I might put uh, Celestial Guidance on my offhand, for example. But... <sighs> Since my main goal is Mythic Plus and the difference on single target between double Lightless Force and Lightless Force Celestial Guidance is not that high right now, but I could see uh, Celestial Guidance pulling ahead when we get more gear because it, that's a percentage increase. The Lightless Force just does damage, it's just a flat damage dealer. So I could see the Celestial Guidance being better the more gear we get. But right now I'm playing double Lightless Force for the big AoE damage, right? There's also uh, another one called Sinful Revelation, which uh, causes the target to suffer an additional 6% damage from you for 10 seconds. It doesn't seem as good as the other two options, so that's why I haven't picked it. Um, so yeah, my, my, what I recommend is just using uh, two Lightless Force if you're, you only care about dungeons. Otherwise, if you care about the raids as well and you want to min-max the raids a little bit as well, then I would go one Lightless Force in the main hand and a 5% uh, agility proc in the offhand. The other 6% damage might pull ahead and the 5% agility might pull ahead completely of the lifeless force when we get better gear, like mythic eye level gear, raiding gear, you know. But uh, right now I'm playing double lifeless force. Now I'm quickly going to touch on some trinkets. I've been getting a lot of questions about the Dark Moon trinket and I am using that currently. It's a flat agility trinket that gives you some haste when you proc it every 1 minute 30 seconds. I use this because uh, haste is a really good stat for me for single target and for AoE it's a good stat. That's why I like to use it. I have some other trinket options, like the Grim Codex, for example, but it's not very good. That's why I picked this, because it's good for everything that you do, and at item level 200, it seems better than any other trinket that you can find in the game right now, like Mythic Eye level trinket. So that's why I picked this for the, the mains, uh, for, for my one slot. And for the other slot, I'm currently using the Decanter of Anima Charge Winds. It's an absolutely insane trinket for Mythic Plus and Mythic Dungeons, whatever dungeons you're doing. I haven't got it on Mythic Eye Level yet, but even at Heroic Eye Level, it's better than the Mythic trinkets uh, that you can get uh, for dungeons, that is. So I have bottled Flayed Wing... Uh, I have Bottle Flayed Wing Toxin, which gives you another poison that you can put on your weapon. It's a little bit annoying to use, because like I already have poisons, and then I gotta remember another poison, and like I put it in my weak aura and stuff, but it's still annoying, and it goes away when you die, so it's kind of annoying to use. But for single target, if I don't have a better option, then I would probably use this instead of the decanter of Anima Charge Winds, like when I start raiding. And uh, then the Grim Codex is just useless. But I'll show you the different... Uh, I'll show you the different sims on Blood Mallet. So we'll pull up Blood Mallet right here. And uh, we'll go to Outlaw. Uh, trinkets. This website is great, guys. If you want to check it out, if you just want to know something real fast, then you can do it. So for single target, Outlaw Rogue, the Canter of Anima Charged Wind at uh, 210 eye level gives 315 damage. And the bottled flayed wind toxin gives two at uh, two ten gives three oh nine. So these are actually really good trinkets that I have. Um, I don't have any proc trinkets. I only have these two, which is uh, like they they just proc like on their own. I don't. I can't. It's not an unused trinket. 
but yeah, the, these at 210 are, are the best too. But as you can see, the Dark Moon Trinket is uh, somewhere in here, right? Uh, Dark Moon Deck Veracity. At 200, it gives 241. And this at 210 gives 315. But we don't have this at 210 right now, right? We only have this at 184 right now. So at 184, it does not become good enough as the Dark Moon Deck. Uh, which we currently have a 200 eye level. So even though this is at max item level, this would be worse. Currently, it's better because it's higher item level than anything we can get right now. So that's why I'm using this one. But uh, if I if I get some other trinkets in the beginning of Mythic Plus or something like that, I'm going to change it out. But these are all the trinkets you can look at. So if you're asking me if the Dark Moon deck is worth getting, I would say yes, it is. If you can get it at a pretty decent price, somewhere around 40k, 50k maybe, then I would definitely pick it up, man. Because it's, it's, a, it's a great trinket. Like even that it's far down the list right here, at 200 eye level, it's still really good compared to a lot of 100, uh, uh, to a lot of 185 gear. So 200 eye level Darkman Trinket, better than 185 Mythic uh, eye level Trinkets. And then for your second slot, I would suggest the Decanter of Anima Charged Winds. If you don't have that one, you should use the Bottle Played Wind Toxin. Um, on single targets right now, I'm going to use my uh, Mythic Bottle uh, Toxin. And on AoE, I'm going to use my Decanter on Heroic. So until I get my Mythic Decanter, then I'm going to use the Heroic Decanter. But when I get the Mythic Decanter, I'm just going to use it for everything. Then I'm just going to forget about the annoying Bottle Flayed Wind Toxin, okay? Now we're going to go over the rotation for single target. After that, we're going to go over the dungeon rotation, which is pretty similar, but with some differences. So the way I like to play single target is with these talents, like I went over earlier. And uh, you pick Killing Spree and Deeper Stratagem instead of the other two uh, dungeon options. And the way Outlaw works is I just want to keep all of these things on cooldown, except for Blade Flurry on... Uh, single target of course i just want to keep these things on cooldown they don't work like sub where you have to like line up all your cooldowns with each other and like maximize these small burst windows and stuff like that outlaw is very chill in that way it's like you just want to use everything when it's up basically and just maximize your uptime because you get a lot of energy uh, you get a lot of cd resets rather on your abilities when you spend combo points you reset uh, cool you reset the cooldown of, of uh, uh, your cooldowns you, you lower the cooldown so this is uh, the passive called restless blades finishing moves reduce the remaining cooldown of basically all your cooldowns and you can also roll uh, one buff through the roll the bones that reduce the cooldown even further so that's why you just want to keep spamming out your abilities the only thing that i try to line up is i try to use my killing spree when i have between uh, between the eyes up on the target between the eyes increases the critical strike chance the t uh, to the target by 20 percent so i really want to have that up uh, during the killing spree so what the two main uh, factors for success in single target outlaw or in general of outlaw is that you want to maximize your roll the bones like you want to roll the bones uh, effectively so you don't want to roll the bones if you shouldn't and you want to roll the bones when you should and you want to manage your resources good so when it comes to roll the bones it's as i said the 45 second cooldown cost 25 energy when you use it, you get one to six uh, buffs. Uh, it's it all depends. So if you get one buff, I always reroll when I get the opportunity to. So when roll the bones comes off cooldown again through the restless blade procs, then I'm gonna use it again if I have one buff, regardless of what buff it is. So it's quite easy in that way. And when I have two buffs, I never reroll. I only reroll if I have two buffs, if I have the buff called Buried Treasure, which gives you energy regen. And the problem with that is it gives you energy regen based on the remaining the, the duration of the buff. So by the time you're able to reroll again, the duration is going to be so low that it doesn't actually give you much energy back. And the other one is Grand Melee. It gives you, uh, it adds seconds to your slice and dice. And by that time, when you can reroll again, then you have like a one and, and one and a half minute slice and dice. So I don't really feel like it's worth keeping those two if I'm able to reroll again. But that's the only time I will reroll. Otherwise, uh, I will not reroll if I have two ever. 
So if you don't want to min max that hard, uh, uh, and it barely makes a difference, guys. So if you don't want to do that, then I would just suggest approaching it. If I have one buff, I always reroll. If I have two buffs, I never reroll. That's what I would do. Because getting two buffs, like even having two bad buffs, is actually very beneficial to you because of uh, the conduit that you have. It gives you an 18% chance to grant your Roll the Bones combat enhancement buff you do not already have. That means that if you have two bad buffs, there's a higher chance your count yod is going to proc good buffs. So having two buffs is always beneficial, even if it's bad ones, except for those very treasure and grand melee that, that are not very good, in my opinion. I'd rather roll for something else. But you don't have to min-max that hard, as I said. So that's how Roll the Bones work. And the second uh, success factor that I said was managing your resources. You don't want to overcap on energy, just like you don't want to do that in any other spec, uh, any other rogue spec. And you don't want to waste combo points. The waste combo points comes into play when I get quick draw procs. I always want to try, let's say I have five combo points and I get a quick draw proc. Uh, I get a proc from my pistol shot to, to give me two combo points. Then I want to use a sinister strike, use my finisher and then use my pistol shot. Uh, I, I, so I don't waste a combo point. I never want to waste combo points and I never want to waste energy. That's how you manage your resources. So you think about how you roll your, uh, your how you roll the dice and how you manage your resources, and then you will do great as an outlaw rogue. So I'm gonna show you my opener. Uh, the opener is basically I do an ambush. Uh, since I don't have marked mark for death uh, talented, I can't put up slice and dice before the fight. So what I do is I'll put roll the bones right before I go in. Then I open with an ambush. I use Adrenaline Rush and my Trinket right away to get the energy regen. And then I start building up combo points. I use Between the Eyes. I want to get that up as fast as possible because it has such huge value. After the Between the Eyes, I put up Slice and Dice on myself because I want to keep that up throughout the whole fight. Especially when we get our Legendary in like 1-2 weeks. Then you always want to have Slice and Dice up even more so than now. But I mean, you already want to have it up all the time. So I make sure I put those two up. Then I use my Sepsis to, to put the debuff on the target and also uh, work on getting that free ambush for the County Odds proc later on. So I use the sepsis and then I actually go into killing spree. This is a little bit controversial. Some people suggest that you shouldn't use uh, killing spree during your adrenaline rush. But I just want to get it on cooldown so I can start resetting it with my passive. So I can start getting it up again. And since I have count between the eyes already on the target, then I want to make sure I use Killing Spree during the, the, the Between the Eyes. So I might lose one tick of energy. But for me, it's, it's worth it. It's worth the extra, maybe I get the full extra use of Killing Spree in a fight. Then that's much worth it to me compared to a one tick of energy, for example. So that's just what I do. Some people might consider that to be wrong, but I, I think it's the best way to go about it. And it does great. So... And sometimes you don't even lose an energy tick. So I'll show you how I do it, right? So you open with Ambush, Adrenaline Rush, Get count, uh, get Between the Eyes and Slice and Dice up. Then you uh, use the Sepsis and then you go into Killing Spree. And that's that's the opener. After that, it's just about maintaining these on cool, off cooldown and uh, uh, keeping your, your buffs up. Your opener might look something like this. First, you roll the bones. Then you grappling hook in, ambush, adrenaline rush, start building your combo points. You don't overcap on your combo points. Start building it up. Four, five, six with sepsis, killing spree. Make sure you use your uh, energy to not overcap. And then you just go into this maintenance phase of keeping your everything on cooldown. We only have one buff, so we reroll. We get the same buff again. Here are between the eyes is on cooldown. We get up to six combo points. Use that. We make sure we don't overcap on combo points, and we, we we just keep pumping. As you can see, the DPS is actually pretty good. Here we don't use our pistol shot. We make sure we don't overcap. Here we reroll again, and then this is just your rotation. You can throw in some uh, vanishes. Whenever in a dead period, like somewhere around here, I would use my Vanish. 
uh, after the between the eyes maybe like that i would use my vanish right now probably um, but i can't do it right now because it will reset the meter and i guess that's that's of interest to some people so as you can see our, our cds is actually resetting pretty quickly here uh, i don't use my killing spree quite yet because i want to use it with my uh, between the eyes so we're building up combo points now for between the eyes uh, that we're working on right now see if we'll get there and there it is use between the eyes and then we use our killing spree out of that we have two buffs right now so we don't re-roll even though it's a short one so now we re-roll when we can we get our between the eyes up again and then we we just start pumping so th this is the this is the single target rotation so when it comes to AoE, your rotation is really similar to single target, but since we're using two more uh, two additional abilities, I'm going to go over how to use them. So marked for death, uh, it resets every time you kill something. So you want to put this up on a low HP target, and you want to make sure that that target dies first uh, to some degree, right? It's a nice way to get slice and dice up before the fight even starts, and that's usually what I use it for. And it helps you a lot in minimizing the cooldown of your blade flurry, which is really important. I'll go over that in a second. So we have blade rush as well. Uh, and the important note here is well, blade flurry is active damage to non-primary target is increased by 100%. So we want to use this while our blade flurry is active. Blade flurry used to be something that you just toggle on and it's on all the time, but it's not like that anymore. It's a 30 second cooldown. That makes it so your uh, damaging abilities also strike up to four nearby targets for six, for 40% of normal damage for 12 seconds. It also does a little swirly thing when you use it. So it does some damage as well uh, when you use it. But uh, the important thing to note here is that it's a 12 second duration on a 30 second cooldown. That means that you have to really work hard to reset your uh, seconds. Uh, you, res you, you lower your cooldown on it through the Restless Blades passive. You really need to make sure you're on top of that because if you mistime that and you, let's say you're you're sleeping or you're doing something else you have to run out from the boss fight and you can, or the trash fight and you can't uh, can't reset your cd your damage is gonna fall a lot so it's very easy to get punished if you use blade flurry wrong so you need to practice on using that correctly and uh, something to help you if you're having a trouble doing all this and it all feels overwhelming is you can switch from blade rush into dancing steel this increases the duration of blade flurry by three seconds and it's damaged by five percent so it makes it a little bit more forgiving to mistakes and a little bit easier to handle also if you're really struggling you can go into deeper stratagem instead of marked for death for aoe as well uh, it will make uh, it it will you will have less combo points but you will also have less abilities to press so it might be a little bit easier but your performance will take a hit from that for sure so the most important thing the mo the biggest mess up you can do is that you're fighting a trash pack over here right there's only two mobs alive they both have uh, very little hp left or like half hp or something they're gonna die pretty soon and then you're gonna move on to this pack over here if I use my Blade Flurry before these two die, and then they die, let's say they die, I have 8 seconds of my Blade Flurry effect left. By the time I get over here, I might only have like 2-3 seconds, and the CD is still going to be like 15 seconds. That means like for like at least 10 seconds I'm going to have not have Blade Flurry, and that's going to hurt my damage so much. Because without Blade Flurry, you don't have any AoE as a rogue, as an outlaw rogue. That's where all your AoE comes from. But other than that, it's the same as single target. So for AoE, you just want to make sure you put Mark for Death on low HP targets uh, so that die early so you can get a, re get a reset and use those combo points. You want to make sure you use Blade Rush when Blade Flurry is active and you want to make sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot by mistiming Blade Flurry. And you want to keep spending a lot of combo points to, to reset the cooldown of Blade Flurry so you can keep a high uptime on that. So what your rotation might look like on AoE is uh, something like this. You uh, roll the bones, of course, in the beginning. You uh, mark for death into slice and dice, so you have that up already. And then you ambush, blade flurry, a blade rush, adrenaline rush, and then you just start pumping. And then you want to get, uh, get your between the eyes up, you want to get your sepsis ability, and then you just keep pumping. And then the same rules apply, you don't want to overcap your combo points or anything like that. And here blade, blade rushes off cooldown again, so you want to use that. When you have 
um, when you have your uh, adrenaline rush up, it's actually pr pretty easy to reset. So we reroll here between the eyes into another blade flurry. As you can see, we're doing 5k DPS now on three targets, which is quite massive. And we can't use uh, Blade Rush, so we're also taking hit from that, of course. We can't use um, Vanish, so we're also taking hit from that, of course. Uh, but even as you can see right now, I'm pressing all my buttons and I'm pumping hard and everything like that. I'm still having trouble uh, resetting my uh, my Blade Rush. It almost doesn't come up cooldown. Like as you can see now, it, it, it uh, I lost the duration, but it came up cooldown right there. So so I actually have a, a one two second downtime. Which is really something you want to avoid. So, this is your, your general AOE rotation, but you can see the damage is, is really insane, right? Like, I just think it's exceptional how much damage you do. And it, it's really fun as well, I'll be honest. Uh, there I made another mistake that even if Blade Rush comes off cooldown, you don't really want to use it until Blade Rush is, until the effect is over. Uh, you don't want to waste any seconds on Blade Rush like or, or Blade Flurry and over cap on your own Blade Flurry and stuff like that. So uh, you you, you want to manage your Blade Flurry real good. You don't want to uh, overwrite your own Blade Flurry and you want to make sure you don't have big windows of downtime on your Blade Flurry because that would really hurt your DPS. But the damage is, is huge for a cleave. So for single target, it's it's pretty good. It's about the same as sub, but for, for AoE and cleave, it's just miles ahead. It's it's one of the best specs in the game right now for, for like three target cleave, for example. So that's definitely something to consider. And uh, I really like Alto. I really like the play style. I like the big swords. I like the animations. I, I like a lot of things about Alto, and I think it's very fun to play. The new systems that they've done with Roll the Bones and everything, I... I really quite like it to be honest so i would really suggest that you test it out um if you haven't already even if you hated it like i did i would really suggest that you test it out and if you have any more questions you can always just swing by my stream i'd be happy to answer any of your questions and uh, that's it for this time guys thank you so much for watching and i hope the video was watchable even though i haven't made a video in over two years so i, I if, you, if you have any tips or any criticism or feedback for me please leave that down in the comments and uh, well subscribe for more content and i hope to see you on my stream guys take care